wild women in the deep east Texas woods. They read some good books and party with the authors and have more fun than you think they could. Wild, wicked, and free. everybody, I'm Kathy Patrick. Welcome to Beauty in the Book. I'm about to interview a writer who's interviewed more than 3,000 writers. Talk about intimidating. This master of the English language is Irish writer Frank Delaney. His outstanding new book, Venetia Kelly's Traveling Show, is worth talking about. Welcome, Frank, so much. I'm so happy to meet you. Hello, Kathy. It's very nice of you to invite me. I want to begin with just talking about this story. Where did this story come from? Well, first of all, don't be intimidated. I don't <laughs> bite unless invited to. Second, <laughs> traveling shows were part of my childhood. I lived in a little village in Ireland very like the one in the book. So I was rooted, am rooted in that countryside and to those villages every year of my life, winter and summer, came these amazing traveling shows just like the ones I describe in the book. You could get anything. You could get a woman singing and dancing while smoking a cigarette and playing an accordion. You could get acrobats. You could even get a ventriloquist, possibly named Blarney, like the one in this book. I love the story of Blarney. Tell me about that. Did you actually know someone who was a ventriloquist? I've known quite a few ventriloquists. Ventriloquists' dolls are slightly scary. A lot of people <laughs> don't like them. But I've seen so many great ventriloquists. I've seen, they're now on television. They're very popular again. And it has always appealed to me. I've tried it. I am probably the worst or the second worst ventriloquist <laughs> in the world. But I do have a few ventriloquist dolls, including one my wife bought me when I was preparing to write this book. Guess what he's called? He's called Blarney. So when I was writing the book, I had Blarney sitting beside me or very nearby, always where I could see him and keep an eye on him. And it seemed to me, you know, an interesting idea and possibly very comical to have in a parliamentary election, since we all have so much politics in our face all day, every day. It seemed to me not a non-amusing idea to have a ventriloquist's dummy run in an election as a candidate so that you could get the newspaper headlines, which dummy are you going to vote for? If you were talking to the person who had no idea what your book was about, how would you explain to them um, without, you know, we, we don't want to give away the mystery of your book? The high concept idea from Hollywood when you're pitching a movie is the shorter the line, the higher the concept, people get it immediately. In this one, a middle-aged man seems to go slightly crazy, runs away from home with a beautiful actress, much, much younger than him, with whom his son then falls in love. And in this book, even though I can tell you what the book is about by using that couple of sentences, that, that high concept thing doesn't even begin to tell the story. What I would then go on to say to somebody to try and tell them what the story is about. It's a story that tries to capture a slice of life in Ireland in the 1930s in the little country fields and parishes in which I grew up, where every neighborly relationship is an intimate relationship, where everybody knows everybody else, where there was a power of relationship among the neighbors, and at the same time, a concern, a rivalry is to see who had the most land, because land was all they had, and land was what they used to use their families. That's in this book too, the sense of people living very close to the land and all pulling together to try and make a new nation, because this was only 20 years after Ireland became independent and they were still struggling to find their feet and find a new identity, find a new way and a steady permanent way of calling themselves Irish. One of the things that um... I mentioned was that you had interviewed over 3,000 writers. Tell me, how in the world did you do that? <laughs> it's somewhere between three and 4,000, Kathy. For many years at the BBC in London, I had book shows of my own, and every week I had a weekly book show on radio, and I had a weekly book show on television, and we interviewed five, six, maybe eight authors a week, and that builds up quite quickly. I never kept count, I have to tell you. But you know, there's always somebody in the world who keeps track of what you're doing. 
And for many <laughs> years, there was this man whom I never met who used to keep a record of all the broadcasts I made and all the things I did. And every so often, he would give me an update. And the last update I had from him, which is several years ago now, before I came to live in the United States, was a count of 3,702 authors interviewed so far. Joining us is Kay Huck and the Pulpwood Queens of Southwest Louisiana. Hi, girls. Hi, I'm Linda. Hi, Linda. How, How are you? Did you have this, this story in your head before you actually wrote the book? <laughs> what a great question. Um, when I was about seven years of age, I saw such a traveling show in our little village in Ireland, Mrs. Cullen's Traveling Show. And Mrs. Cullen had yellow hair and a slash of red lipstick and a cigarette hair. And she looked like a, a wire coat hanger playing an accordion. And she danced and she sang. And I was at that show. And my mother said, that's not theater, you know. And I said, it is to me. And perhaps that's where the idea was born. Hi, I'm Grace. And what I was wondering was, um, how old were you when you first started writing? I think I was about nine. Um, it's, it's interesting when you trace back how you became what you became, so to speak. There were many things I wanted to be. I wanted to be and could have been a professional sportsman. I wanted to be a courtroom lawyer, what we call a barrister in, in Ireland and England, uh, because I love, obviously, clearly love the courtroom drama. I love teaching when I get a chance to, and um, I wanted to be a magician. But you see, ultimately, where I come from, made me into a storyteller. And Vladimir Nabokov, who wrote Lolita, said that a writer is three things, a teacher, a storyteller, or a magician. He, he added, by the way, or somebody like me, is a, a great writer, is all three. Well, I'm principally a person who likes to tell stories because that's what I come from. Why did you choose to write so much backstory before you began the storyline? Because when I'm reading myself, when I'm reading a book, I like to know as much about the people as possible before I learn what they're going to do. I find that when I know more and more about them, I understand better the things they do, the circumstances into which they get themselves, the difficulties they find in life. And I like that carpet, so to speak, that, that deep background there um, of, of knowing what the character is likely to do in certain circumstances. In most of my books, I do that at the very beginning, and then I proceed to put the main character under pressure and see what he will do. But the reader should have some idea of what that character is going to do, because there is a backstory. And in those circumstances, if the backstory has worked in advance of the action happening, then the reader is ahead of the game. And that's a very nice place to be if you're a reader. You know what the character is likely to do before the character actually does it. It's a device. I won't always use it. There are some novels in which I haven't used it at all. But in these Irish novels, whereby coming from Ireland creates a certain kind of leisurely mood anyway, I suppose, in storytelling, to fill in the background of the people in the book before they get started seemed to me an, an ideal thing. And also remember, this book is about a drama show, about a traveling theater group theatrical group. So I thought I would get all the characters on stage and introduce them beforehand, like you do in an opera, for example, or in some of the medieval mystery plays, so that everybody knows everybody else, and then they all go to work. And by the way, in case you're worried about how this book ends, let me tell you there is a sequel. Oh, right. are wondering. And it's going to be called The Matchmaker of Ken Mare, and it's about a girl who's a matchmaker. I'd just like to thank Kay Huck and the Pulpwood Queens of Southwest Louisiana for joining me and Frank Delaney on Beauty in the Book. Thank you, girls. Thank you, Kathy. Mr. Delaney, we have certainly enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frank. It was a pleasure. And you're right. It wasn't intimidating at all. You are a real treasure. Thank you so much. Bye, Kathy. Thank you. Bye, girls. Bye. -bye. Bye. And if you want to meet me on Twitter, I'm at FD by the word, FD for Frank Tonini by the word, and it will nearly be so difficult as your questions have been today. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. I'll see you on Twitter.
Frank Delaney lives in Connecticut now, but do you know the city in Ireland where he was born? He's a long way from there now. Go to our website to enter our Beauty in the Book giveaway. Ten people with the correct answer will be chosen at random to get a free copy of today's featured book, Venusia Kelly's Traveling Show by Frank Delaney.